Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler, June 8th, 2018. Now today we're going to talk a little bit about sea level rises impacts on a particular region of the world. But before we do, I'd like to just provide a broad overall discussion of the present impacts of sea level rise and the, the issues that are we, we are seeing now and that we will see in the immediate future. So to be clear, globe, across the globe, seas have been rising now for at least 120 years. And this is due to human-caused global warming as it relates to fossil fuel emissions and the increasing level of greenhouse gases in the Earth's atmosphere. Now, overall, sea levels have risen by more than a foot across the globe during this period, and the rate of rise during recent years has accelerated. And what is likely to happen is that as the Earth continues to warm, this rate of sea level rise will continue to accelerate and not only will it accelerate, but it will tend to accelerate for a time on an exponential scale. Now, how much global sea level rise accelerates and how much global seas ultimately rise depend directly on how much greenhouse gases enter the atmosphere and how much the Earth ultimately warms. And so we're in a situation right now where Coastal cities and inhabited regions and critical ecosystems are under threat by sea level rise. And whether or not those regions survive will be the direct or, or are inundated will, will be the direct result of our choices with regards to primarily energy use over the coming years and decades. So what I'd also like to say is that presently we see a number of very vulnerable regions of the world and, and one of them is the US East Coast, which is experiencing more and more flooding at the times of high tides. Uh, flooding at times of high tide, according to this report in The Guardian, have doubled in the past 30 years. And and this is a situation that will continue to worsen. How, how much it worsens is dependent again on how much additional greenhouse gases we dump into the Earth's atmosphere through fossil fuel burning. But in particular, the most vulnerable regions of the world to sea level rise are the lowest lying regions. And, and these lowest lying regions also tend to be rather heavily populated due to the fact that wetlands are so productive. And, and so these, these low-lying regions often are at river deltas. And so areas of serious concern involve the Mississippi River Delta, which is highly populated, the Amazon Delta, which is less so but is a critical ecosystem, the uh, Rhine, River Delta in Europe near the Netherlands. No, Netherlands is very low lying. The Nile River Delta, which is heavily populated. The Indus River Delta, which is heavily populated. The Yangtze River Delta in China. And the Mekong River Delta in Vietnam, among others. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the Yangtze and about some impacts that are appearing in the Yangtze River Delta region. And so what has been happening is that seas have been rising in the Yangtze region. And if you look at this global map here, we see that the region near the Yangtze River is one of the more rapid uh, sea level rise regions in the globe. So a bit above the global trend, uh, more than five millimeters per year. And as a result, 
Vietnam has been doing its best to try and to, to defend farmlands from the rising waters by, by building a series of dikes, some of them as high as four meters. And uh, in, in, in a number of respects, these dikes have protected lands from inundation, but what it has not prevented is the invasion of salt water into rice growing regions. And a recent study in, um, by the Vietnamese found that over the past 10 years, 1.7 million people have migrated out of the Mekong Delta region in Vietnam. So, so what we've seen is a significant number of people moving out of the Mekong Delta region. And part of the reason why people are moving is due to poverty. And, and the triggers for poverty have been the loss of, of agriculture. This is a very agriculturally focused region. And so as the salt water has inundated and as we have seen more intense droughts, which is also a climate change related factor, the farms have become less productive. And in particular regions closest to the ocean, for example, in the um, Sok Trang region, we have seen significant reduction in, in productivity. And in some cases, uh, whole provinces saw rice production completely cut off during the period of 2013 and, and, in, and also into 2015 and 2016 as salt water seeped into the soil and killed off plants. Now, studies indicate that people leaving the Delta region are aware of climate change and about 14% of migrants themselves indicate that climate change is the reason for them leaving. But a higher number indicate poverty. And part of the issue here is that the climate change, if it's destroying crops, if it's destroying the means of livelihood and, and the research indicates that that's what's happening, then climate change is also generating a poverty pressure on this region. So, so some of the more aware people are, are noting that climate change is the, is the root cause, but perhaps uh, some of the people who are claiming that it's poverty are, are less aware of, of root causes and systemic causes to the poverty that they are suffering. So this is an early indicator. This, these are early effects of climate change Saltwater indication, uh, saltwater inundation, is is a lead-on effect. But as time advances, these delta regions will not just suffer crop losses due to saltwater inundation. They'll they'll start to see direct inundation from from sea level rise, depending on how much fossil fuels we pump into the atmosphere, and. And it's likely that many of these regions will not be defensible, regardless of how many coastal barriers are ultimately erected. But the, the migration pressure that we are now seeing is, is significant and, and is likely to continue to worsen. And, and how much it worsens will, will depend directly on our choices with regards to energy. For example, whether or not we rapidly tra transition away from fossil fuels to a 100% renewable energy footing or whether we delay a transition. The longer we delay, the more negative impacts we are going to see, the more the oceans will rise, and the more catastrophic impacts we will ultimately see.